Hey guys, um, my name is Anna Booth and I'm the director of Great Oak Rugby Club at the South Temecula School in California. Kevin Rodriguez was a kid who came out to play with us last year. Um, he came to practices, he kicked around the ball, he had a good time, we had a great time having him, but like his registration wouldn't pull through. So I called to figure out why it wouldn't and apparently that little sucker, he'd graduated. So he couldn't play any of the league games and so most of our teammates don't remember him um, as being part of the team, some of the parents don't. But a lot of kids do, too. And um, he was uh, stabbed to death, M multiple stab wounds in a parking lot that is very familiar to our little small town. It, Walmart is in a location in central South Temecula. It's like a five minute drive from Pechanga, if you're familiar with the casino. And everyone who lives between here and there has shopped at our Super Walmart. I think it's number one in the nation for being um, productive or whatever the heck. Um, we live by the Luceno Indian tribe and just people buy there and it does really well. So it's a common spot. And I think most of my neighbors go to Walmart three to six times a week. That's the easiest place to get things from. So I was on my way there the other day and there was no way I was gonna get inside, so I just kept moving along. Forgot what I needed to get, as usual, and just went on with my day. And that night, Wednesday, um, of this past week, in November, the last Wednesday in November, the 29th, after practice end, some of our graduates from last year's team, who are now coaches for USA Rugby, Southern California Youth Rugby, he said, do you remember Kevin Rodriguez, coach? Do you remember, you know, he had a tattoo on his arm, he came out? You know, uh, he's, the, he's the kid who died. Um, I couldn't think straight for a little while because I do remember his fervor and his energy and his excitement to come out and play and be a part of something. And I remember having to tell him, I'm sorry you can't play you're too old, you graduated, but please come and coach with us or go to Ombak or, or do something. And I just remember him taking it really well, but I found out today he, he cried. He was really bummed he couldn't be a part of what we were doing. I found out today um, through his girlfriend and her family that he was really bummed he couldn't be a part of our, our thing. Um, It wasn't over parking spot. It wasn't over anything except the the guy who stabbed him lived behind a house up the street from me with his family. And those two kids can't return to our local high school. They're going to have to flee out of the state because it's a junior. You know, like my name was Paul Rand. And I had Paul Rand Jr. So when people search this guy's name, they're finding his kid, who was a lovely boy that so many people loved, that were best friends with, that appreciated, that had classes with, his daughter, beautiful girl. Um, but people don't have any respect. And the kids are gonna be leaving now, not able to say goodbye to their friends. I don't know what their home situation was, but I've learned that the stab, the stabber, he he took Kevin out by the hands around his neck. He looked at Jensen, his girlfriend, Kevin's girlfriend, and said, you're next. He stabbed him in the heart. And once he realized what he did, he tried to help. He stayed around. But Kevin died in Jensen's arms. Um, there's still blood stains on the concrete at Walmart and I think they need to handle that because there are a lot of people who can't return to their store until they do. But like people are saying, who does that? You know, who would, and it's just, it's an open-ended question. And I think the mental illness of someone, okay, say they have PTSD, say it's, oh, they, they fought or they, they had a, 
previous incident in their life that causes some sort of brain trauma or some sort of flashback. There's some switches that go off in people who have mental illness and from one minute it's I know better and the next minute it's like Bruce in Nemo and the black flip switch goes off and they just want to freaking eat that fish and they just go they don't care they don't care what's happening they just have to address what the wrong is in their life and they have to make it pay and I don't think we address um, mental illness specifically strongly enough in this culture and this time the mental institutions the pathways to make things better for people with mental illness still don't exist quite strongly enough because people who suffer they have to be willing to listen they have to be willing to want it they have to be willing to make their own appointments catch up with their own prescriptions do everything that matters to make their mental state better and that's a lot to ask out of someone who's suffering so I've read comments you know how come no one reported this man he apparently um, suffered how could his new wife or nobody say that he was met what what do you get to do until something horrific happens you don't you don't get to do anything if you know that someone's suffering mentally unless they commit themselves or they do the work or they want to fix it until something severe happens no one's gonna hold that person accountable and it takes a lot to ask someone to be accountable. Um, I don't know and quite understand why he's out on bail. Um, that's upsetting to a lot of people. There's going to be a vigil at The Way. It's a church off of Sky Canyon and Marriott Hot Springs up in our community, about 20 minutes north from where Kevin was from. Uh, his, his girlfriend and their family, they're faith-based people, so if you'd like to honor his life and you want to go there, 6 o'clock on Sunday, December 3rd, please feel welcome to do that. And I'm going to say something that you might not agree with, but I, was, I would ask that you pray for that man that wronged this family and this child and this lovely human being. I ask that you pray. Um that he gets the help and that he wants the help that he needs. It took something like this. And I don't know if he'll get better. But like when everyone says, who does that? I'm just trying to explain who does that. Someone who's not okay. And they didn't get the help they needed. And no one called them out on their actions beforehand. So this is mental illness, people. This is when whatever upsets you so much causes you to say, screw everything else, my anger is more important, my wrath is more important. Well, guess what? You take life, evil comes to kill and destroy. They want to kill you, they want to destroy you. If you're a faith-based person, you know that. Prowls around, like, prowls around like a lion seeking who he can devour. And Kevin was devoured. Kevin was killed. His family's destroyed. His girlfriend's destroyed. Their lives are destroyed. And the family who of the stabber, their lives are destroyed. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. You can blame. You can be upset. But like at some point, forgiveness is more about you than it is about them. And you don't want to harbor that seed of unforgiveness that drives a wedge between you and everything else that might be good in your life. Because unfortunately, when tragedy happens, the world continues to spin. Life continues to move on and the years continue to pass and it seems unjustified and cruel. When you survive loss, it doesn't make any sense that the world just goes on. Christmas happens, New Year's happens, birthdays happen, anniversaries happen. And so you grieve and you suffer and you're in pain. The cross is about the ugliest thing that could have happened to Christ. And yet out of it came his resurrection. So... Kevin's death is not in vain. Kevin's death is going to unite this community, bring people together. It's going to challenge people on their idea of grace and forgiveness. And it's going to make every person think about who does that and what kind of person could. And if we don't learn something from this, then shame on us. 
there's an epidemic. You can do 22 push-ups. You can blame the war. You can blame, blame the service. You can say it's PTSD. You can say it's road rage. If you have to put a label on it to make sense of it, fine. What are you going to do about it? Just think about that. All right. Love and peace and honor to Kevin's family and to the victim, uh, victims of the Stavers family. You guys aren't having an easy time either, and our hearts go out to you. Take care.